or deciding the best suitable inventory policy, the topmost criteria used is the cost function. This inventory analysis has four major components. Component number one is purchase cost. This is basically the nominal cost of an inventory. It is the cost incurred in buying from the outside sources, and it would be known as production cost if the items are produced within the organization. The cost is constant for a unit but may vary according to the quantity purchased increases or decreases. For example, the unit price is 20 rupees for up to 100 units and 19.50 rupees for more than 100 units. If a unit cost is constant, the control decisions would not have any effect because whether all the requirements are produced just once or made in installments the total amount of money involved would be the same. Component number 2 is ordering cost or set up cost. This occurs whenever the stock replenishes. It associates with the processing and chasing the purchased order, transportation, and inspection for quality. It is also called procurement cost. The parallel of ordering cost when the units are produced within the organization is the set-up cost. It refers to cost incurred in relation to developing production schedules. The ordering cost and set-up cost are taken to be independent to the order size. So the unit ordering, set-up cost decreases as the purchase order increases. Component number 3 is carrying cost. Carrying cost is also known as holding cost and it refers to the cost that is associated with storing an item in the inventory. It is proportional to the amount of inventory and the time taken to hold that inventory. The elements of carrying cost include opportunity cost, obsolescence cost, deterioration cost. The carrying cost is expressed in terms of rate per unit or as a percentage of the inventory value. And component number 4 is stockout cost. Stockout cost is the cost, which incurs when customers are not being served. These costs imply shortages. If stockout is internal, that means that some production is lost internally also resulting in idle time for man and machines. If stockout were external, it would result in potential sales or loss of customer goodwill. When the new shipment arrives, a customer who was denied earlier would be immediately supplied the goods but it would involve costs like packaging costs and shipment costs, 